Hello there, my name's Mark and these are my dice tails and this weekend I've been crafting a new tile system because I wanted an organic flowing tile system for use in potentially the Elf Scrolls Call to Arms tabletop game. So this is my results. This is uh, say two days work. Out, I've made 10 tiles. I think, and now I'm going to go make more, but let's show you how they go together. So I've got a couple of adventurers and a couple of beasties, and I believe everything should fit. So I've made about one foot's worth. This is, this is a one foot by one foot mat, and for Skyrim it is a two by two foot uh, co-op. You can go on a three by three foot skirmish game, but it's a two by two foot co-op. And basically, because of this game I've been inspired to craft again, let's see how it's going to go. So let's say we start, so we'll, generally we come in on an entrance. Wait, so we're going to have our adventurers, the guy with a torch, Redgar, and the cleric. And we're coming into the, say, your traditional system would all be flat. You'd come into a large room, there might be a branching corridor off there, which is one level. So ignore the sort of nodules for the moment. Well, this will be an existing sort of tile system you might see. And they'll just say, you know, right, this joins into another room. Once we explore around here, find another room. It's a dead end. So we're going to go off down this way. I think I'm going off the camera here. And that's how you generally, the walls are defined by the tiles. So that's still the case with this system. But these tiles are two sided. Uh, not two sided. They are, sorry, they are two sided but they've got two le levels to them. So this is, I put everything down on one level. Let's just flip them over and see them on the other level. The other level is a lot flatter, but you can still do stuff with that. So now, now it looks like we've got a raised walkway and if my black mat was of some texture, I feel like I'm above it. Maybe you could jump down to it, maybe not. Maybe it's, you've got a blue for river or start putting your tiles on top of each other so now we've gone one level off the ground two levels oops so there are ways of balancing that out so that is uh let's see so all we need to do is put up a support underneath there i'm, I'm using and now we're not gonna drop down so we're stable we're stable so generally each of the pieces is built i'm gonna say like a table in that it should be stable on either side. Uh, so this one's got two little prong legs and then one fat leg, so it should stay stable on one side. So I tried to make it so it would fit. So there we've got an overhang, so we're going go around here, go up to there. So we're now one, two, three, four, five levels high now. So that'd be great. Uh, shooting archers, uh, shooting down at people. I'll shoot up at people for that, uh, for that matter, trying to get round and get up to the evil wizard on the top. Some of the pieces actually, these are these joining pieces, uh, can just be flipped over, it almost looks like an altar table. If I made a smaller one, that would look quite cool. And I'm just going to try and spin that round so you can see the 3D-ness of that. use those uh, two stalagmites pieces to try and remain in frame in camera so I'm hoping, hoping that's working. Uh, so I did also build these stalagmites effects so they could go on top of the tiles. They could either bridge out anywhere where there's gaps, maybe give it a little bit of stability as well or just add decoration on the ground floor to make it look all the more underdarky. Because when it starts getting underdarky you start getting drow involved and it's so modular, you can just take it apart and make it into so many different uh, variations. So let me try that again. So we come into a large cave system. Let's have our heroes joining the system. And then it stretches out into a tight 90 degree corner. And that then dips down again. So we've got uh, ground layer, upper layer, down a layer and we could start possibly building up so I'm just putting these down as foundation rocks to put a large piece on top so now they might not matter the ones underneath too much 
so long as they give you the heights that you want. But when you get to the altar table at the top, or the rocky uh, stalemite infested de depths of the Underdark, I think, I don't know what my highest level that I've got to is yet, whether it's still remaining stable, but I'm guessing it can be quite high. There we go. And I've, I've been having great fun with it. I mean, and this is just 10 tiles worth as well. And if I had more of a design in mind, maybe I was following a map from an adventure system, I'm sure I could make tiles too much. And this is really simple. So what it was, what I built it out of, so this, I don't know if you can see that, is it's a fitness mat. You generally get about four of these squares, and these squares are two foot by two foot, so even one is plenty. And this is just one square cut up so far. I don't know how much square I've got. But it gets so, so much variation to it. So when you have overlaps like that, one, the overlaps, even if it's just a flat dungeon, give it that more organic feeling. Let's just try and make a fairly large flat-ish dungeon. And as you can say, the, the black bits, they could be there, your, st your uh, thick walls that you can't see through, so I couldn't see from there to there. Or maybe you do want to see them and it's re representing a chasm. So it's versatile like that. Then we maybe want a bridging piece. And if that bridging piece was higher, it would have allowed someone underneath. It's uh, stable. I had a setup earlier on. I'm going to try and flip through photos and other footage. I'm trying to do this in one take because it's annoying. Um, you can cover up the, cap, the gaps with small filler pieces. You can just add decoration with the stalagmites and stalactites. <laughs> you could have cats in your dungeon scrapping. And it's just. I can't stop playing with it at the moment. I was, it went through some design phases where I thought, oh, this is going to be terrible, I've wasted my weekend here. But in general, I mean, there's loads of, I think I've made this a bit small. I think my next batch, when I maybe do a time-lapse tutorial, I'm going to try and make it a bit bigger. Uh, this is fine for a very detailed, complex dungeon type. Um, but as I say, I was thinking of Skyrim, where you tend to go in as a one-man, two-man team. And it's generally very narrow corridors. I don't know how the Skyrim game is going to play as of yet. But I think I'm getting prepped and ready. And this is, I think, looking damn beautiful. So let's see if we can fit a dragon in. Should we go high or low? That's, I probably need a longer straight piece. I was just experimenting with overlaps and 90 degree curves with that piece. So let's get the uh, the dragon's chamber. So I think we're going to need a fairly large area. Here we go. Do we have anything that fits in that smaller gap? Yes, that's not too bad. There we go. You can cover up the cracks if need be, and even just cover up the other caps with a flat piece. And introduce our dragon. Oh. Across the rocky outcroppings, you see a scaly beast unfurling. It flaps its wings in the echoing cavern, causing a gust to come your way, flickering your torchlights. There we go, ready for a dragon battle as we, uh, as the heroes enter the small cave system. And I haven't made treasure yet, I need some gleaming treasure. There's lots that I've got to craft. So this is all thanks to one, I spotted a Kickstarter uh, that I missed out on, but I think it was a bit expensive for me anyway. And you could have the fishers, whether the fishers are relevant, so whether you do want to go down that uh, to that lower level, or whether you're going to go for a more bridgey effect. So I need to cross bridges to get to the dragon, where he's just going to be flying and buffeting and casting spells over it. So every piece should work on its own, flips one way or the other. 
Oh, what was I saying? I was saying the uh, the Kickstarter it was based on. So, uh, Terra, Terrascapes, I think it was called. I puzzled over the videos and I watched them flip them upside down and make these beautiful flowing organic cave systems and I thought, wow, it's wonderful. But I couldn't quite work out how to purchase them, so that put me in motion of setting about making my own. And this, this is the result. This is the weekend's result. This is my first sort of prototype copy. So as I mentioned, it's made out of uh, terrain, you know, fitness, fitness mats, uh, foam cut up. You can get XPS foam as well. That might be neater because this is a little bit rough on the edges. Not as easy to carve as, say, XPS. I'm not too sure if my next batch, I've started some of them. That might be an XPX. I can't remember which one of these is already an XPX piece. These are definitely built on pink foam, but the rest are black. So it was cut out the spaces, cut out the, the shapes that I wanted. In some cases, I tried to make them fit together. So where I've got these leg, leg nodules, I tried to make sure I'd have a piece that would fit between them one way or another. So whether it's a bridging piece or not. So that should be able to fit in any of those. Do we call them table pieces, door pieces? I do need to craft some doors as well. I'm sure that will add another dimension to it. Whether the mines, so look at this, we can now get his stairs. Flip that one round again, let's just get that round. So we had a piece like that. There you've got your stairs. I mean, imagine a doorway going on top of that. And this being a textured uh, foot floor flat. Oh, there we go, stairs. And even further stairs, there we go. And so our, if I balance that final piece, we're getting all sorts of. I don't know if I can get that final piece balanced with what I've got on hand. Let's see if I've got enough. Ooh, might have, we might have. There we go. Now we've got, I mean, I'm doing this one-handed. With prep, you could make it more stable. Could make your steps wider so people, heroes could actually fit on them. That's stable enough. And a dragon at the top. Uh, and then obviously you need more tiles to uh, to deck out the rest of the place. So there's a ground piece. Or a raised piece. It all fits. And the undulating high lowness. I'm sure that is going to add to any sort of effect of gameplay. And then uh, yeah, stalagmite stalactites to bring out the dark. The under darkness and really flesh it out. There are obviously more props that you can build in, chests and such. I'm wondering about a water effect and pools and putting holes in some of these tiles so they can see through. I know in Skyrim you have some uh, trees going from in underground caves spiraling out, out to where the sunlight's coming in and that looks wonderful. So yeah, I think this is good enough for sort of a one take view of the system. I'm going to try and maybe put some other modulations that I've done and show all the pieces individually on both sides that I've made so far. So some of them I've tried to plan where they would sort of this would be a step up into a tile or out of a tile like a corridor. Um, it might just be a long corridor in itself. This one being like a bridge bridging piece. Very very narrow I know but um, sometimes you have that kind of effect in a in a DD game. And others I tried to make sure though, this one, instead of having four table legs, it's also got a central one. And then I did just put some extras on the side to bulk it out. So that can overlap other pieces. It doesn't have to overlap, you can keep it aside and you've got cracks so it can overlap so there's less cracks. All in all, that Kickstarter really inspired me. I think it's quite a genius system that I've not seen other crafters do. Uh, most of the crafters sort of keep to the grid-based system. So if you're not grid-based, uh, I'm more skirmish game than, than role-playing. Uh, but even when I'm role-playing, I never really liked the grid-based system. I liked bringing minis because minis are fun to collect. Didn't really represent them in battles myself. I more just like to show, right, yeah, your roundabout's there. There's roundabout a dragon just about there. Potentially, you could climb up to the peak and jump down on his back. Uh, Shadow of the Colossus style. Potentially you could be hiding behind a rock, but that didn't really matter too much to me. The actual inches and placements. It was more a little bit of a visual 
diorama-esque nature to my games. So that's it. I'm going to leave you with that. Please do comment and like. Do comment if you want to see me how I built this and I'll try and do a time lapse of it. Because this was a demo and I didn't know how it was going to turn out, turn out I didn't bother recording myself. Uh, I wasn't too sure on the, this material for tiles. I've actually used birdcage litter as the effect on top. Uh, in some cases my PVA and plaster went a bit wrong, but when I've been in caves, you do get that sort of watery, pooly effect. I'm not impressed with my stalagmites. These need a redo. I might use Scotty's toilet paper. If, if toilet paper wasn't so uh, rare right now, I would consider craft, use, craft, using it as a crafting material. Uh, and maybe redo these to be a bit more. And I want some columns. Skyrim's full of echoing chambers and big chambers. So... And as you see, with the big chambers, it's going to be something very much like that. And now that I've built these, I can work off, you know, put these onto my foam and cut them out so I get another piece that'll fit in there. And then I've got a big room, rather than what I have at the moment. I mean, I can fill in gaps and have a big room anyway, so there you go. It's more like a massive dragon, dragon room. I'm having great, great fun. Just modelling it, moving it around. Enjoying the 3D the three doings of it that I mean when Hero Quest first brought the doors into the game and the bookshelves, this is like the next level. So thank you Trainscapes. Thank you Luke APS, DM Scotty, the train tutor. Black Magic Craft, gosh yes, I've been watching a lot of you at the weekend to try and get an idea on what you're doing for crafting and tiles and such like that. I've got some ruins to come that I want to make for Skyrim. I mean, I already own the uh, the Warcry set, but didn't have a, there's no cave system out there. And this, I think, is going to be a very good contender. So, let's hope that recording went well. I'm going to try and just put still photos and maybe other time-lapse me flipping over the tiles and spinning them like you've seen here uh, at the back of this video and comment below if you want to see how I made them more step-by-step step. I mean I think that description sort of does it cut out your foam make it two levels high so they're all going to be a uniform two in um, this is some bleh. this is 10 millimeter foam so that's uh, they're 20 millimeters in height so they're all uniform and I'm wondering for you know when we want that higher ones maybe having some generic 40 millimeter 30 millimeter sort of columns so we can instead of trying to stack things up with the tiles that you've got you've got uh, other pieces ready but this is 10 10 tiles and it's so versatile 10 tile 10 versatile tiles so 10 the double sided so 20 with Innumer 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 innumerable configurations. I mean, even that way, that because of the legs, yeah, still covering up the hole. Yeah, then, then we start getting into the rocky realms sometimes, unless you watch where the legs are sometimes. I mean, that's nice as a corner piece. You can use it raised up, but you probably do want something underneath that lip. So there we go. Now all of a sudden it's much, much more stable. Perfect. So yeah, I'm going to leave it there, stop talking. And yeah, comment below if you want to see me make it step by step in that sort of time-lapse fashion that other crafters do. It'll be my first real crafting tutorial. I do hope you enjoyed it. So yeah, just one more spin. And then I'm going to try and pop it on YouTube. I don't know what the light is like. I've been, I've been reined in here at the moment. And waffling, waffle, waffle, waffle. Wow.